Hello, my friends. Um, this is Jamie McGlue. I'm an independent candidate for Dublin Bay North in the upcoming elections. Um, so I am making this video to tell you a little bit about my core three policies. Uh, you know, like basically any question, um, th like I, I've there are many questions which I have, have uh, detailed thoughts, complex thoughts about, but the core three ones are free speech, uh, fair borders, and full sovereignty. So these are three things which I think um, basically we we need. We can't, it's not negotiable. So basically it's to the extent where I am encouraging people to um, vote for anyone who stands by those three things, so long as they, you know, they don't stand for criminality or violence, some or crazy things. So now I was just told, you know, I asked someone, you know, like, would they um, support me? And they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they they spoke to their family about it, and the family were like, oh, I, he sounds like bad news. He sounds racist. He sounds, you know, anti-immigrant. He sounds, you know, far right. And so I just want to make, they said, if you, you know, do you have anything you can, I, tr uh, I tried to explain, you know, you're a good guy or whatever, but do you have anything you can um, offer me to help explain it to them? So this is basically to, to them, but then I think there are many, many people in this, in their boat. Um, and fair enough, you know, if it sounds like that, then, you know, um, it's my job to try to communicate clearly to you um, and not just say, oh, well, that's stupid. I'm, you know, you should trust me <laughs> so i'm going to try my best to communicate here i am not racist at all right like i love all humans you know um and so you know it's a bit tricky though like how do you prove you're not racist like well i mean i'm not racist so i don't even know where to start here but i would say um i think just like there are in a friend group you know we're you, ideally you, you're all different a bit but you're all similar enough that you can get along um, and uh, you should all enjoy your uniqueness. And um, that actually is like cross pollinating. And you have this where the collective group together is even more rich and, and beautiful because of everyone's differences. I think the world is the same way and cultures um, mostly about culture. I think genetics probably has some effect like, uh, you know, morphic fields like Dr. Rupert Sheldrake's work where, you know, the events of the past get encoded into your DNA. And, um, but I think mostly it's like, uh, just culture, just the way, uh, people could be very closely related within Europe, but their culture, their beliefs and behavior, their beliefs about what's good and bad and what's, um, true and false, they can diverge, you know, anyway, you know, I think it's all good and it's all the beautiful, like the whole world, we all have different ways of being and, we're different, but we're close enough. We're all humans and we're close enough. We're just like that friend group. We can all get along and we can actually enrich each other. Um, but if one friend starts saying like, Hey, you know, you always need to hang out with me. I always need to be at your house, you know? And I'm like, well, I don't, you know, always, uh, want to be like hanging out with my friends. Like I want to be able to have my own thing as well. My me time. I think it's also important for balance to be able to, experience your own culture and maybe some people just constantly want to be cosmopolitan dipping and diving like some people always want to be with friends right so the sim similar thing with cultures i think some people just love that and they that's cool but they need to well i think it's wise for them to understand and try to empathize that there are a lot of people who they love their me time they love their family time they don't always want to be around their friends and there's a lot of people who they, they take comfort in their own culture and they don't always want to be around other cultures. And it doesn't mean they're racist. Um, personally, I like, I, I have quite a, I'd say a high bandwidth for like other cultures. Like I, I really enjoy it. So I'm very curious, but still like sometimes I just really love, you know, like you could say I was raised in Australia. Um, and so that's my culture. And to, to some extent that's true, but I've always, I always felt like something was missing. And it was a bit strange growing up. Some like I loved Australia and I do, but I always felt something was a bit missing. And I was always dreaming of some green land. And I think somehow, like, and then when I got to Ireland, I was like, oh, everything clicks, you know? So I think that might be some genetic memory kind of thing. I don't know. But um, 
I love Irish culture. And um, there are times when I, I really just, I want to be just with Irish culture, you know? And, um, and I think, uh, but some people, I, if some people want to always be with a mix, that's cool, you know? So, but, but it doesn't mean you hate other people just to say that you love your own culture most, you know? Um, like I love myself. I like, put, let's put it this way. I don't want to be anyone else. I, I, I wouldn't rather be Tom Cruise or Elon Musk or like, whoever i want to be jamie mcglue that's who i want to be and i want you to want to be yourself you know i think we should all be embracing our own uniqueness but also living in harmony and caring about one another and i think nations is a similar thing some nations maybe like australia or the usa or something like that or canada it's more of like a mix or brazil there are a mix of various you know basically the previous nations so to speak were destroyed to, um through conquest um which has happened throughout you know history right um and uh various different groups uh, uh in this case it was europeans doing it but it's happened throughout history you know many groups so it's not just a european thing um it's a human thing right and um what happened after is that through colonialism you got these nations growing where there are many just different ethnic groups and that's a big part of it and it's just it's just totally normal and so that's a different style but anyway I won't get too deep into that but the point is like I'm an English teacher like I teach people from China uh, from like this but I won't bore you with the whole list but um and I can speak little chunks of um you know, I'm not like boasting or something, but just help you try to, how do I prove I'm not racist? If I was racist, like, why would I learn chunks of all these languages? Like, I know how to say thank you in maybe 20 languages, maybe more, maybe 30. Um, and then like, hello, or, you know, you know, that kind of thing. And if you, and then maybe like, how do you say, or that kind of thing, like starting, can you say that again, these little things, maybe 10 languages or something. So I'm very curious about that, for example. I've traveled a lot, you know. Um, and yeah, I think uh, to cut to the chase, you know, what I'm trying to say here is um, uh, there is a gap. There is a gap in, the, in a divide appearing in Irish politics. And I think basically there are people who are, you know, going like, uh, oh, you know, we need to let everyone into the country and you know if you're hateful we need to stop you speaking like that because that's not good and um we should all be together and we should all be kind of working together as people and there's these big problems we need to fix so um we need to integrate more with the eu and that's good that's that's the future you know um and that means less war and a better economy and more travel and more exchange of ideas and um and there's a lot of truth in that, um, but there's two sides to the coin usually. And so we should try to be thinking, is there another side to this, which I'm overlooking? Um, and there is another side. And they say, you know, if you take that extreme, they'd say like, um, well, there's the Ireland, the Irish are the indigenous people of this island. We've been here for thousands of years. And just because the people have white skin, it doesn't mean they're not indigenous. They are literally the indigenous people. Um, and there are international law protections for indigenous peoples. And if you imagine, you, you could say from their point of view, like, imagine if you had Kenya or something, and like, and this did happen with Kenya historically, but let's say right now, Kenya, or um, I don't know, let's say Myanmar, or uh, what do you, Bolivia, whatever some country and you go yeah we're going to pump it full of white people europeans uh and they're going in there and it's you know kind of affecting the culture the local ways and it's changed there's a housing you know affecting housing availability and blah 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 and, the, and a lot of the local people weren't happy say 70 percent, as in ireland 70 percent or so it's estimated you know it's hard to know but um are concerned about the levels of immigration they think it's too high not just illegal, but also legal in general, that, you know, the things are changing very quickly. Um, imagine if there was some traditional culture around the world and that was happening. I think rightly we would go, this isn't good. Um, you know, nothing against white people, but uh, like this is they have a traditional way of life and it doesn't, not really about the color of your skin, but when you're coming in, you've been, you've 
grown up in another part of the world. You have your own ideas about how things work. And um, so that's affecting them. But also that's their story. That's their home. That's their community. Um, like a, a nation is like a family of families, you know? And so you can join the nation and you're marrying into the family, really, you know, you're becoming part of this big family. And, um, but, you know, it, it, it must be with the consent. You know, we speak about consent in many other areas of life, but it's equally important here, the consent of a nation to have people come in. Because um, it is, you know, the way I would view a nation is it's collective property. Um, just like I can own shares in Apple or Google, I don't own the whole thing, but I own a stake in that. It's literal ownership. I believe all the citizens of a country own a stake in that country. And it's an inheritance from your ancestors, from their suffering, their blood, sweat, and tears working to develop natural resources. And, um, you know, you might think it's a bit monkey primal, but, and it kind of is, but, but that's the way that the world works. And this is, you know, what we respect all around the world. You know, we want people to have their own lands. We don't want them to be dominated by some big country. Right. Um, and so, you know, I'm meandering a little bit here, but I, you know, I didn't really have a plan. I'm just trying to speak to you about um, my point of view about these three things, these three core policies, free speech, fair borders, full sovereignty, in a very candid way, where you can see, hopefully, that, you know, there's no racism intended, um, or, you know, there is no racism. And uh, I believe in the EU, I think it's got great potential, but it's become too top heavy, too centralized, we need to make it so that it's a, uh, what it was meant to be, a collection of partners, not subjects, and then a new king in the middle. Um, and uh, fair borders, yeah. No country can have unlimited immigration, uh, you know, coming in. Um, suddenly, you know, there must be some sort of equilibrium. So I do believe immigration can be very beneficial in many situations, but it must be um, in balance. And, uh, you know, say... The USA, I'm sure they could have a lot of immigration and that would be fine. Um, but Ireland's a small country. There is in just a few points, right? Just it's a small country. Uh, there's a housing crisis. There's an endangered indigenous language, Gaelga. Um, the amount of people who have been brought in this year, I think, is about the same number as who, uh, the number of native speakers, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and... Uh, you know, security things. There's a lot of people um, who are coming in who are exploiting the system, and we know this, uh, who are coming in on fake passports, etc. cetera. Um, and, you know, there's been some increase in crime, you know, and that's not like a racist thing. It's just saying human beings are human beings. And we need to be honest that like, you know, people take advantage of opportunities. And if you're not checking passports, you'll get some bad people coming in. Most of them good people probably, but some bad eggs, you know? So I think, there's this picture and what I'm saying is there are these two views and they're not talking enough. What I'm trying to do is just to be honest, open-hearted and open-minded and try to be a bridge where we can bring this together and say, look, this isn't going away. We can just call them far right and racist and crazy, or we can call them sheep and, you know, like, you know, shills and whatever idiots, but it's not going anywhere. We need to, we're just getting further apart. What we need to do is we need to come together and have an open heart and open mind and say, okay, what you know there is what is the truth here and i believe the truth is balance in one word balance so free speech be nice but the government can't force you to be nice because then that goes down 1984 road um who decides what's hate what if adolf hitler was deciding what's hate i'm sure he would have a very convenient definition for himself wouldn't he so and then you know uh, fair borders what is the balance i don't know exactly what it is but i would guess no illegal immigration and temporarily probably slow down the legal immigration even because you can't have huge numbers of um, young Irish people leaving the country because they can't get a house and cost of living is too high when there's all these pressures and then bringing in other people. That's not right, right? So, and th what is the balance? And then uh, sovereignty, you know, just being like, we're just Ireland, no one else get involved. That seems extreme. But also being like, oh, we're just a province in Europe. That also seems extreme. Um especially our ancestors, they fought for this and for freedom. And every people have the right to express that they're themselves just as, as an individual, you have the right to your own self-expression. So I'll have to leave it there, um, but I hope uh, that explains <laughs> uh, 
that, you know, I'm just a normal person. I love everyone. I really appreciate humans everywhere. Um, but um, all things in balance, you know. And um, yeah, I think this is something we really have to, we have to try to avoid getting triggered and we have to be patient, take a breath and try to talk about these things. And if you still don't agree with me, that's totally cool. But I really hope um, you can uh, agree that, you know, there's not a, a nasty bone in my body here and that I really do see us all as branches on one big, beautiful tree. Um, and if you still don't, don't believe me, then that's all right. No worries. You know, whatever whatever lights your lamp, you know? So God bless. Thanks, everyone. Peace and love.